Uh, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Um, I'm in the Sora and I don't know, you might be able to hear it, but it's actually running and driving, which is great. It's been months since the swap and I've had a few issues that have kind of kept the car off the road. Um, so this video is basically a big amalgamation of clips from the last three months uh, of me just fixing the various uh, issues that the car has had. And basically I go through, I did a, a slight change to the pedals and then I had a, a fairly major issue with uh, the throw bearing on the gearbox. Uh, when I say major, it was actually a really small fix, but in order to fix it, the whole gearbox had to come out of the car, but you'll see that in a bit. Uh, and then finally the power steering pump. But all of that's done now, so let's just get on with the video and you guys can see the fixes and repairs that I've done. Okay, so moving here in the car, um, as you might have seen in the last video, the pedal situation looks a bit like this. So the um, clutch pedal here is from a Supra. The manual brake pedal is supposedly from a Sora, but I'm not so sure about that. And then you've got the stock um, accelerate pedal. So the reason why I'm checking this out again is because as you can see, the manual brake pedal is quite far over um, towards the clutch, which it's not crazy, but um, eventually when I um, get good enough at driving a manual and I want to start trying uh, heel and toe, you can see there I have to swing my whole foot almost a full 90 degrees and I'll still be on the edge there to hit the accelerator. Uh, and I've just found my, myself when I'm driving, I often move my foot and then end up pressing the brake right on the edge because I'd prefer for it to be uh, a little bit further over or centered. So, uh, so one of the reasons for that, you can see the manual brake pedal comes down and then it dips to the left there, um, which I'm not sure why it does that. So what I've done is I've gone and bought a manual brake pedal from a Supra. Uh, I don't have good verification that it fits. All I know is some guy on Facebook tried it and it worked. Um, and having a look at the photos, the brake pedal is dead straight. So that should bring it much closer towards the accelerator and kind of in the middle there. Um, so I'll show you that pedal now. Uh, so this is the pedal. Um, as you can see, it's dead straight all the way down from the mounting point down to uh, where the actual rubber and where your foot goes. Um, this is the auto pedal here. So just having a rough look at um, kind of the lineup. Um, so the mounting holes look like it should be fine. The stopper looks like it should be fine. And even the um, push rod, I don't know what you call it, pin point, um, looks like it should line up reasonably similar. But my main concern is this pedal here, you can see it like dips down. And so this might be a little difficult. I might put the camera on a tripod so I can show this. But basically you can see if I line these holes up and I line the uh, pin point for the push rod points up, the difference in the height in the pedals is uh, quite massive. So because of this dip down here, this pedal is like a full inch or two inches lower to the floor of the car. So I don't know if the push rod will be able to extend out uh, probably another inch to get the kind of equivalent height um, but yeah that's something that I'm going to check out now so basically I'm going to remove the one that's in there uh, test fit this and see if I can bring it forward a little bit so it sits uh, nice and neat okay so I have the pedal removed and as you can see here I think I got scammed when I bought this pedal um, he said it was from a manual Sora but you can see here because of the patterns this is exactly the same pedal. This one's just been cut down and a new rubber put on it, which is very annoying, but that does explain why it sits so far over to the left. So I don't know if this pedal will fit, but uh, it's worth giving it a go. Okay, so I just have it loosely hanging there and you can see just from spacing, uh, the straight up and down is exactly where it needs to be. Unfortunately, I don't think this one's gonna fit because that's as far forward as it goes before it hits the, the stopper, um, which is not far enough. You can see it's below where the accelerator is and way below where the clutch is um, and if it's that low you can see it, it hits the floor almost immediately so unfortunately I don't think it's gonna sit there unless I can somehow modify the assembly bracket that it bolts onto. Okay so it's actually been a couple of weeks um, and it's a bit of a case of solve one problem and on to the next um, but before I get on to the actual issue which is actually a bit more of a serious issue with the Sora um, I want to just quickly show you the pedals. Uh, so moving under into the pedal area here, you can see it's now pretty evenly spaced. Um, essentially, this 
pedal here, which is actually an automatic pedal. Um, the steel was actually soft enough, I literally just put it in a vise and bent it straight. And it's pretty good. So the only problem is, the only small issue is, um, you can see the height of these pedals here. Um, because I bent this one straight, it's now a little bit longer, but it's almost not noticeable. Um, and yeah, pretty happy with how that went. Uh, but onto the more serious issue, and the reason why I've got it jacked up here on the jack stands. Um, as soon as I had the pedals done, I was like, oh, I want to take for a drive, see how it feels. And instantly I noticed the clutch felt like it was kind of sticking on its way back up, where after like on a depress. Um, and initially I just thought it must be the actual hinge itself was, I don't know, had some gunk or something there that was causing it to be feel a bit sticky. But then I noticed um, when I was had the door open and I was looking down into the pedal box, when I pressed it, I could hear the squeaking and rubbing noise actually coming from the bell housing. And this got progressively worse over the next probably two days. Um, and so I couldn't actually drive the car. Like it would stick and then you'd kind of have to give it a bit of a, a kick to let it come back and then it would suddenly rush back and the car would jerk forth. So I, I wasn't going to drive it like that. And over the next probably two days, it actually got worse to the point where now, if I start the car with the pedal depressed and I take my foot off, it full binds and gets stuck down and I can't get it back. So I've spoken to, um, or I've emailed Joel Granis about it and he's talked to Tilson, the manufacturer of the throwout bearing. And they basically reckon it's either the throwout bearing somehow, the housing somehow misaligned, but they don't think so. And I don't think so because it's directly bolted to the gearbox. So I don't know how it would become misaligned or the clutch pressure plate bolts may have come loose so the whole clutch is actually like at a slight angle and uh, it's causing it to bind when it's pressing it back in and that would kind of make sense because with the car off it's actually fine and as you would expect with the car off um, it may actually have enough like free play to get pushed back into in line and let you do it as soon as you turn the car on it suddenly becomes out of line again so um, anyway, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to check, try and check the pressure plate bolts through the little access panel in the gearbox and see if they're tight just with the little uh, hand tool. Um, I just want to see if it's still hand tight at least. Um, if not, then that's the problem. If I discover that's the problem or I don't know, uh, the next step is basically pull the gearbox and try and inspect all those parts. So that's what's happening today. Okay, so can you do a full press in? Yep. And then slowly release. Okay, so step one is, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but if you'll focus those bolts in there, um, basically I need to test if they are hand tight. So I've got a breaker bar on the crank and I'm going to turn it slowly so that I can access all of those bolts in there and just see if they are at least hand tight. Uh, it's a bit annoying working by myself because I can't quite reach the clutch from here. Uh, and also reach the breaker bar on the crank so I have to go around and go back and forth and back and forth which is a bit of a slow process. Uh, well, reached the end of troubleshooting with the gearbox still in the car. Um, all those clutch plate bolts are, sorry, the pressure plate bolts are all at least hand tight and I can't undo them by hand so I don't think they've backed out at all. Um, I've tested cracking the bleeder line with the clutch in to see if we've still got pressure, we do. 
Um, I've tried even putting a little bit of WD-40 on the sleeve itself to see if it's a lubrication issue. It's not. So the only thing now is to pull the whole gearbox out and inspect all the parts individually. Um, but I'm still a little confused because the only two things I can think of is it's a throwout bearing manufacturing issue, like a problem, a defect with the product, or somehow a defect with the clutch where the fingers have somehow become misaligned. So not sure, but that's what I'm gonna try and find out. So time to pull the gearbox out. Okay, so the exhaust is off, the drive shaft is out, the fluids are drained, the wiring harness is disconnected, so now it's time to drop the gearbox. a bit of effort um, as I'm doing this by myself now instead of with some help but I got it out Okay, so the gearbox is out and it's afternoon so I'm probably about to wrap up actually but I'm pretty sure I have discovered the issue. It's not the clutch, um, double check those bolts again, they're all good. Um, then I went to play with this and this is what I found. So this sleeve here, when you pull it out and you push it back in, you can feel it's almost like it's grating on something and you can see it's just jammed there and put it back in like that. And I don't know if this is relevant either, but you can see, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but how much wobble, not the, not the bearing, but the actual sleeve has inside the housing. There's quite a lot of slop there. But certainly, like if you press on this side here, it doesn't go anywhere. And there's definitely grit or something inside there, preventing it from sliding back smoothly. Okay, so the next step in trying to solve this issue uh, is basically to inspect this bearing itself. Um, so following some advice from Tilton and from Joel Grannis, I've actually removed this uh, bearing from the sleeve, just like this. And then I've inspected both the actual sleeve itself and then the housing that it sits in uh, to see if there was any grit or dirt or stuff in there. Um, long story short, uh, there wasn't. So um, that's a little annoying to not realize what the problem is after that. I was sure I was going to find something in there. Um, but basically, I'm still going to clean it out. I've just got these um, Q-tips here. Uh, so I'm just going to clean the inside out, clean this bearing, and I'm going to put a little bit of grease on there to see if it helps make the sliding uh, a little bit easier. So Tilson have also said that uh, having it jam when you only press from one side is completely normal. Um, and because as the clutch pressure plates are meant to be pressing evenly around the face, um, it shouldn't happen. So that kind of leads me to think that the clutch is still misaligned. Even though I've checked the bolts and they are still torqued, um, I'm going to recheck them all again, uh, maybe get a flat bar to see if it looks like anything's not um, parallel with the face 
of the gearbox or the belt housing. Uh, also, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this in a video before, uh, but basically um, it's quite a noisy gearbox uh, and the reason for that is the slop in between the gears. So you can hear that there and basically when you're at an, a low RPM, the vibrations coming through from the engine, which apparently Jay-Z is notorious for having quite a bit of vibration on the low RPM, it kind of rattles the gearbox and that's the noise you're hearing, particularly under um, under load. So if you're going up a hill in a gear that's too high, that's the, that's the noise you'll hear. Um, nothing to worry about, that's what it's designed to do and it's completely normal, you just have to get used to having a bit of a noisy gearbox. Okay, so straight away I can tell um, it has made a difference to put the grease on. Um, it is just sliding that a little bit smoother. Um, it's still, like I said, if you press on one side, it still gets stuck. Um, and it does still feel like there is a little bit of something in there that it's grabbing on, I'm not sure, but uh, it's smoother than what it was. Uh, okay, so the next step is going to be removing the bell housing so that I can properly inspect the clutch and how it actually sits, if it sits flush onto the flywheel. So it's going to be lean the motor back again. Um, there's a few bolts, there's a couple on this side, the starters, uh, and then that can just pop out. Um, and then I can inspect the clutch. the bell housing off um, and I've rechecked literally every single bolt here and they're all tight and there's no movement at all in the plate or the pressure plate. I've checked um, the pressure plate is flush up against the flywheel uh, all around so yeah I don't I don't know what the issue is now. Okay so I've been kind of stuck with this car for a little bit now um, seems like everything I check has been fine or no issues um, but I've been doing a little bit of reading in the last few days and there's basically one last thing that I can check is back on the bearing. Okay so when we're looking at the bearing here um, actually on the inside of the bearing which you can't see at the moment but underneath that sleeve basically there's another black seal which is what the hydraulic fluid actually presses up against so the last step is to basically open it up try and take that black seal out and see if there's anything underneath that black seal. Uh, but that's basically the last thing I can check here. Um, from then on, uh, it's going to need Tilton to inspect the clutch and the throughout bearing for any, uh, if there's any manufacturing faults or issues with it. Um, I'm hoping I find some grit in there because that would answer all the problems. Um, but regardless of whether I do or don't, I think the next step after that is to put everything back in the car. Uh, and then test if it's still got the issue. I know I haven't really changed anything other than cleaning the bearing, um, but that's, I'm probably gonna need to reassemble it and test it again uh, to be able to convince Tilton that there is an issue here and I need to get the parts inspected and replaced. I don't know that we'll get to pressure because I can hold my finger up. Oh yeah. So we popped the seal out and had a look, couldn't see any grit or anything inside there, it all looked clean, but we cleaned it out anyway. We ran a compressed air through the lines to blow anything out if there was anything in there. Um, and then we've reassembled it back together. Um, so we're just gonna test, hook it up to uh, the system and test that the seal still holds pressure and doesn't leak. Uh, and then we're moving on with the plan to reassemble the gearbox. Um, it's possible that I didn't notice when draining it that if there was grit in the fluid that I was draining and maybe it just got flushed out naturally that way. Um, I'm not sure, but that's why I think 
we need to reassemble the gearbox and see if the problem's still there. Um, I probably won't show putting the gearbox back in. I've already done that before. Um, so if you want to see how that's done, uh, you can check out the video on my channel. Okay, so it's the end of the day. As you can hear, the car is running. Uh, gearbox is all in and it's pretty much okay. So I don't know if it's my imagination. There still feels like a little bit of graviness, but that might just be the twin plate clutch. There's no noise whatsoever. So it's all smiles on this end. Um, so basically now it's just time to drive it. Uh, actually, I'll just show you under the car where um, I'll get my dad to press the clutch and I'll show you that there's no noise this time, which is really good. Uh, so that's probably it for me from today. Um, I guess I'll see you guys when hopefully it's all driving, fingers crossed, and through the broken period, the braking period for the gearbox, uh, and then we can get on it and have some first rips. Okay, uh, unfortunately it's always fix one thing and on to the next with uh, an old car like this, but basically after the clutch was fixed, I took it for a drive around the block and the power steering pump sounds like a supercharger it's making terrible noises particularly when you're on full lock uh, and low speed so i don't know if that's a problem that's been caused just because it's been sitting for so long and maybe some gunk is built up somewhere and is restricting flow um, or if the pump itself has actually shut itself so that's what i'm going to do today um, i am still smiling though because the clutch issue is fixed um, driving around the block there was no issues engaging or disengaging the clutch which is great and that was kind of the biggest one that was stopping me from actually driving uh, particularly because for for weeks and weeks actually I, um, I didn't know what was wrong and I was trying to diagnose it so anyway basically the plan for today is I'm going to drain the fluid uh, try and get as much out as I can then I'm going to disconnect the reservoir here um, so just unplug it, unbolt it and apparently there's a filter in the bottom of this um, where the feed line comes and feeds the pump that can get blocked up with gunk. So I'm gonna see if it's, I'm able to kind of maybe remove it and clean it. Uh, I'm not sure entirely yet, but that's the plan for today. Uh, and then once that's cleaned, if I can put it all back, uh, I'll flush a bunch of fluid through it and then fill it back up, re-bleed it and see how it goes. Basically the next step now is to unplug these two lines and I think there's, a, there's three bolts and one cable clip and then this reservoir should come out and then hopefully I can have a look at the system and see if there's some way I can clean out that filter um, or uh, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll see once we get to it. So I have the reservoir removed, but the issue is really, I don't think there's any way to access the filter. Like it's a fully sealed unit and if you take the cap off, uh, you probably won't be able to see much in there. No, you can't really see anything. Uh, but at least you can see how small the hole is. So you can't really, I'm not sure how I'm gonna clean it. Um, you can see there now that the return pipe stopped dripping. I've pulled this out and you can see how dark it really is. It's, uh, it's almost black like you used engine oil. So I'm gonna go ahead and guess this has probably never been flushed in 30 years. Okay, uh, so update. It's actually been several hours, um, but basically what I did was I took it off as you saw, and then I ran some um, DEX3 ATF through it. And as soon as it was going in like red, like this, the, the normal color for DEX3, and it was coming out black. So the filter was obviously very dirty. Uh, I don't know whether that's the cause of the issue, but 
anyway, how I cleaned it was basically I filled it up with some like brake cleaner degreasers type stuff, shook it all around and poured it out and I saw that it was like full of dirt, like full of bits of stuff. So I did that a few times and then I filled it up and let it sit for a few hours. And then I emptied it all out, did it a few more times and I kept doing it until basically there was no more grit and dirt coming out. And then I retested it with ATF, um, ran some ATF through it and it's flying a bit smoother. It might just be in my head, but it seems like it's flying a bit smoother and there's no dirt and it's going in red, coming out red. So basically I'm gonna refit the um, reservoir back in. Uh, I'm gonna pour fluid through the system. Um, I'm gonna give it a bit of a flush, so I'll keep pouring until it comes out red. Um, and then I'll plug it all back in, fill it back up, bleed it, and fingers crossed it might solve the issue. Uh, this is the face of someone who spent the whole day trying to fix something and it didn't work. Um, refilled it up, bled it and dropped it back down. As soon as the wheels are on the concrete and there's resistance, it basically still makes the noise. Uh, which is unfortunate because that basically means it's time for a new pump, which is a bit of a job and a little bit expensive, but I guess in the long run it'll be worth it. So at least I've now ruled out that it's the filter that was blocked. It was blocked, but it uh, doesn't make any difference with the noise. Um, so yeah, next step is to buy a pump. Uh, so I've got the pump here. This is a unit from G GRP Engineering. Um, and basically, it's brand new. I could have bought a um, rebuild kit for the one that's in there, but I was thinking because it was shuddering on, uh, like, turning, basically turning the wheel, uh, it makes me suspicious that the impeller inside might actually be broken and the rebuild kit doesn't allow for that. So. I just bought a whole new unit, it's not too expensive. Um, it also came with a built-in reservoir, but I have to use the stock one because I can't fit this one that's directly bolted onto the pump here. Okay, so looking in the engine bay, we've got the pump down in here, which you may or may not be able to see. Um, and then we've got the reservoir over here. So the first step is basically gonna be draining this reservoir. And I can do that by following, if I follow the return pipe down, there's a good access pot point underneath the car. Uh, once that's done, I'll probably remove this intake pipe and probably remove the battery and then I can remove uh, the reservoir and then let's take the belt off and then I should be able to just unplug everything, unbolt everything and swap the new unit in, bolt it back up and top it up by, with fluid and re-bleed and that should be it. Okay, so I've got a bit better view for you here. I've removed the um, intake pipe and the battery and you can see the pump's just in here. Uh, so there's two fittings. Uh, this one I'll need to keep and reuse. Uh, this one here I'll need to keep and reuse, but the new pump does have this adapter here um, on it already. So I've got the old one out. Um, there's actually only two bolts holding it in, um, even though it looks like there, there, could, be, there could be three. Uh, so I'm just gonna put the new one in. It just literally drops in there. Um, yeah, it should be pretty easy to put back in, uh, connecting all the way, all up back to the original reservoir there. So I'm gonna get to it. So it's all lead, belts back on, intake pipes back in. Uh, basically, I'm just letting the battery charge up a little bit um, and then I'll put it back in and then I just have to bleed it uh, and that will be it. Uh, so I probably won't bother filming the bleeding process because it's kind of boring. Um, so I'll see you once that's all done and fingers crossed it's fixed the problem and the car is now drivable. Uh, and just like that, it's back driving again after three months, which is terrific news. I can finally re-begin re learning how to drive manual. Um, I was going to show you a few driving clips, but this video has already gotten quite long, so I might end it here. Um, uh, so hopefully the next Sora vid um, will be after the braking period, and I'll probably give you a bit of a review, actually. Um, I might put a camera in the car, go for a drive, and just talk through how it feels to drive, and 
uh, my thoughts on the gearbox and the manual swap. Um, but that's it for this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, mostly just fixing the Sora and the, the few issues that I've had. Um, but thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.